So earlier this year, I picked up Batman Beyond on Blu-ray. I got it for $9.99 and I was finally able to watch the full series because growing up, I only watched random episodes of this series, but I never watched it as a whole. I saw the movie and then I watched random episodes, but now I was finally able to watch from start to finish. So I saw all 52 episodes plus the movie. And boy, let me tell you, Batman Beyond is so goddamn good. Like Terry was literally fighting crime and then going to the club to hang out with his girl or hang out with the hoes. Like that man was out here on the dance floor fighting crime then going to the club having the time of his goddamn life along with him you know being in high school even though you think about it, it's like shouldn't he have been like at least 21 or something to get into a club or 18 or at least not been in high school but hey it don't matter it's the future in this world because you know they're in a cyberpunk type of gotham city so it don't really matter what the laws are in that world but yeah terry was really out here fighting crime and then going to the club to shake some ass with the hoes or shake or dance with the hoes i should say though but yeah let's talk about batman beyond because this was an amazing great watch and i want to talk about all my different thoughts and feelings about this series after finally being able to watch it entirely because as i was a child i always thought this show was dope and really good but actually watching it from start to finish i realized how good it actually was and i can't lie there's a lot of stuff in here i actually enjoyed a little bit more than batman the animated series i will say that though man i gotta get back you're so lucky <gasps> guys don't have any are you listening to me of course batman beyond today on kids wb Batman Beyond takes place in a futuristic Gotham City in the Batman the Animated Series universe. The show starts off in 2019 with an older Bruce who's still fighting crime, but on one of the missions that he's on, he ends up having a heart attack, so he's forced to like give up being Batman at that point. And then we go 20 years in the future to a Neo Gotham, which is like a cyberpunk type city. Now the show mainly follows a character named Terry McGinnis, who is a high schooler delinquent who goes to the club and parties with his girlfriend named Dina. One of the times that he goes to the club, he gets harassed by the Jokers and he gets into a chase with them and they have like a really cool like chase scene on motorcycles it's like the way it looks at it you'll think of like something like akira that's kind of what it does remind you of i will say that and eventually he does end up at wayne manor and then bruce ends up saving him and then like he even finds out that bruce was batman but one of the things that happens in the series that even turns terry into batman is that his father gets killed and eventually he finds out who it is and then like bruce finally agrees to let him be batman and once terry becomes batman from then on we get to watch the whole series of the 52 episodes of seeing terry as batman as he struggles with trying to have a normal life and be Batman at the same time and trust me he goes through a lot of different things now the series overall is really good because like I really like the balance that Terry has to have between you know having being a high schooler and then having a girlfriend and then even doing stuff with his family and then being Batman because it kind of reminds you something of like Spider-Man I think that's why I think Terry's so relatable as a character because he kind of reminds you of Peter Parker it's like what if Batman was like a Peter Parker type of character and that's what Batman Beyond in my opinion really reminds me of because terry's a very relatable character because i relate to him so much because like he reminds me kind of like how i was in high school a little because terry is cool with almost everybody in the school besides some of the people that he's not but it's like he can hang out with so many different people and then also he's fr some of his closest friends are girls and that's why i could just kind of relate to him because i was like dog when i was in high school that's kind of how i was some of my closest friends were girls along with like some of the guy friends that i had i was cool with a lot of different people so he's just kind of like a very relatable character along with them just having to have that, that work life balance that he kind of has has to have us because there's times that he has to struggle with that and how you really see this struggle with him is especially when it comes to him and Dana because there's a lot of times that he has to give up going on a date with her to go do crime and there's other times he has to tell Bruce he's like dog I planned with Dana to do this and it's like I don't want to like go do this but he has to go out and fight that crime because he's the only one in the city that can really do it for the most part because he doesn't really have no sidekicks like the same way Bruce did eventually when he got you know Robin and then Batgirl and all the other ones but like he is by himself so he has to do this by himself majority of of the time but i will say when it comes to him and dana their relationship is kind of like on and off because i'm just like dog how is she still with this man because there's so many times he has to leave her and like i just say hey she's a strong teenager i could say that she has to be a strong teenager just for that to deal with all the stuff that he goes through even though there's multiple times when she's like dog she's like forget terry i'm done with him just for him to come through and then like do something nice for her or you have that one time when she thought terry did something nice and end up being like i think it was like the rat king or the rat kid or whatever it was that was living like 
like in the underground and he had like those big giant rats i think he was technically supposed to be the rat king but at the same time i don't remember because you know there's so many different versions of villains or, but i digress but yeah you have times like that where they're always getting into it and then you had another character that was another love interest that i wish they would have kept around for like longer as a love interest which was melanie and you know she was part of the royal flush gang because she was the daughter to like the the king and the queen of them and one of the things i really hate is like they did not keep her along to like actually have a thing with terry because i do think it would have been nice for the series if melanie would have stayed along longer as like a love interest instead of like you know terry like throwing her letter away and then from there we really don't get no love interest between them because yeah we do see her a few other times throughout the series but it's never really no love interest thing because you have like the first few times because like the first time i can't lie when they met and you know terry was feeling a certain type of way because like him and dana got into it and then melanie shows up and you see they're in the club dancing and then outside they kiss and you just like you felt that vibe and they had that vibe there but then eventually he finds out that she's part of the royal flush gang and then he doesn't really care because he's just thinking like yo i'm gonna throw this letter away and i'm just gonna stick to being loyal with dina when it's just like dog why can we not just keep her around just for a little bit just to have that back and forth because it kind of would have been like how bruce had catwoman along with other you know women that of course that he had but it would have been nice if terry had her too that you could have had that dynamic that could have happened every once in a while maybe just to test his loyalty or just add some you know a little spice to the series add a little love triangle like they could even had her go to the same high school where terry and dina went and you could add like a you know a little bit of drama there that's like one thing i wish they would have done just add, sprinkle that little drama there that could add something more interesting to the story just for like terry having to deal with you know two different girls that are like at the school that both like him it would have been something interesting just to see a different interesting dynamic i guess of just drama now another character that i really did like was max because max early on she finds out that terry is essentially batman and, and from there they become super duper cool even though they already were cool and you see sometimes max helps him out and even she even helps out like when bruce can't do things because you know bruce is an old man now and trust me he struggles at times because of how old he is and he's not used to being you know old because he still thinks that he's batman he's like yo i'm batman i can do all this when it's like nah dog you are old now but yes i love the dynamic between terry and max like it kind of reminds you kind of like of alfred type of thing that's kind of what he has but at the same time i feel like max doesn't get the shine that she deserves most of the time because i feel like she could have had a bigger role especially because i think in the movie or it was either the movie or just like the justice league episodes we really don't see max at all I, and that kind of sucks especially like the the ending ending of batman beyond that you know like the actual quote-unquote animated series finale that happens in batman beyond we didn't even get to see like an older max and that kind of sucked i was like dog max was a really cool and dope character to me though now another character i do have to mention is barbara who you know is batgirl but in this series she's the, actually the commissioner now because she followed in her father's footsteps and we see like her and bruce kind of don't have like that good of a relationship eventually you know they get to talking in throughout the series but we get to see like how she has to deal with different stuff like the time like her husband was getting attacked and she had to deal with that so there's a lot of interesting things with barbara that you can just see like how she grew up and like how things have changed especially like how she doesn't really care for like batman and all that stuff anymore because that's kind of her past and now that she's the commissioner but you see like she eventually does come on to terry and realize like yeah terry actually is good for us and we do need batman in the series now when it comes to bruce i actually do love the way his character is in the series because he has to realize that he's not batman anymore especially because he had the heart attack that was like way early on in the series and you see like the way he is now and especially because he has nobody at all because everybody's gone nightwing is gone barbara's not talking to him and even robin's not really rocking with him anymore because especially because what you learn in the movie about like what harley quinn and joker did to him like as you learn in the movie so like essentially nobody's really with bruce besides the dog that he picked up and of course we did get a backstory on the dog too i think the dog's name is ace and we did get that backstory on him but besides the dog he really has nobody at all and like when it comes to terry terry low-key is kind of just helping bruce out because bruce was kind of just like a cranky old man that just lives by himself but it's like now that terry's there he finally has somebody that he can talk to that's kind of helping out you know his mental health and like especially like when it comes to like batman because now you have terry there and you see like there's a little dynamic between them especially because terry has certain ways that he wants to do things and bruce has certain ways that he always did things but he's realizing that times have changed and maybe he should listen to some of the ideas that terry has because there's a lot of times that they butt heads and trust me they butt heads throughout the series a lot of different times when it comes to like how they should handle certain situations there are times that terry should have listened to bruce and handled it that way but there's also times where terry does something like actually the right way that like bruce was saying needs to be this way but it's like terry does it a better different way so there, there's times like that that you can see that it's like yeah bruce your way was cool back in the day but you need to follow what terry's doing because terry knows what he's doing because he's younger and he can do all this and there also are times when bruce does have to step up to save them even though he's older and there's like times like he has to step up like when he's in the limo or the times that he does get into a suit because he has to help out terry because terry was in a certain predicament that happens throughout the series especially like when 
Terry gets knocked out because I will say this Terry does get his ass whooped a lot in this series but like for the most part that's, that's kind of like how a lot of these older series were when it comes to the hero they get beat up for a little bit just to like figure out what they need to do but there are times that I do feel like Terry I'll be like damn Terry why are you getting your ass whooped like this you should not be getting your ass whooped like this though but it happens though now when it comes to the villains in Batman Beyond Terry really doesn't have that big of a roster when it comes to villains that are like for his own or at least that are very remarkable because the majority of the villains are just people from the past that were like Bruce's villains. Like you have Mr. Freeze that shows up again and his story actually in this is actually pretty sad because we see that he actually gets to like get a full body now and he gets brought back to life just for him to die at the very very end which was very sad. And then you have Raja Ghul who shows up and that man is on some very diabolical shit. That man literally is inside like his daughter because you know like the way they do the thing whatever i know that sounded like a very crazy sentence but you know like his brain is basically taken over his daughter's mind and all that and like the crazy thing is like he kisses batman he's leading batman on he's making batman's body all younger and stuff because you know bruce is of course wants to be young because he wants to be batman again and we do get to see bruce a little bit younger like for a little moment but yeah that whole thing with raja Ghul was so goddamn wild i'm just like dog i'm like no you did not take over your daughter's mind just to go kiss bruce and then like seduce him and all this and i'm just like yeah that man was on some wild stuff he was on demon time but yeah majority of the villains are just people that return they're at least like older or they're like their new additions of like stuff that we already saw in batman the animated series because they're already been like bruce's villains but there are a few villains in my opinion at least there's one that was actually really good that's part of terry's roster i say of villains and that is ink ink is actually a really fascinating villain compared to like almost everybody else we see and to me she's the only one that really has importance because she's a reincurring villain that we see a lot of different times and we know a lot of different things about her because we know her backstory about like how exactly she became ink and like how she even has a daughter and we see that like this whole time like she's been fighting crime and making all this money that she's still been giving money to her daughter even though she has not been raising her daughter because she had to give up raising her daughter but so like when she actually does finally meet up with her daughter we see that her daughter at first is not really feeling her because she's just like dog why did you like get rid of me you could have been here this whole time and then that's why we see her daughter eventually like backstabs her at the very end but we do see that ink might have got the last laugh but ink was probably the most fascinating villain in this series to me because she was the only one that like was a reincurring one that i actually thought that I was like yo she's actually a pretty interesting villain and it's one that we saw a lot we got a backstory on her and like her ability was pretty cool too so she's one of the few villains that i actually did enjoy in this series a lot now now, another villain that did eventually become interesting because at first he was not really villain and that is big time who is terry's like friend he's also the guy that he got in trouble with and sent the juvenile with and uh, we see that he always wanted to have like some big deal and he's trying to get terry back into like the whole thing but terry's not on any of that because he's of course he's batman now and, and of course he's bettered his life since like that when he got sent to juvenile and all that but eventually we do see that big time eventually he got like mutated into like that blob so like he was an okay villain just because he had some type of relations to terry so kind of reminds you of like something like Two-Face and Bruce because you know they were like close and all that now one of the really cool things that does happen in this series is like they show us what the futuristic Justice League looks like and we see that Superman is still part of the team but he's way older of course but we also see something suspicious is happening and you just eventually you do find out it's the one starfish that's been controlling everybody but at the same time we get to see like that Terry every once in a while does join the Justice League but he's just like the way Bruce was what he would join when they needed help but he didn't do all the time because he was a part-timer and you know the crazy thing is that that leads into like Terry showing up in the Justice League Unlimited series because if you remember Justice League Unlimited they had like two different episodes where Terry showed up and the episode that we see Terry in which is the season finale of Justice League Unlimited season one and that is the once in a future thing part two if you remember this two-part episode this is the one where Batman Wonder Woman and Green Lantern all get sent to the future by like the, the end of like the first episode and in this episode we could see Terry in the future as he's older and he's an adult now along with a whole bunch of other different characters like the futuristic Green Lantern and the new like hawk man and like the one of the things i really did like about this part is of course we see like a younger batman be with like of course terry and get to see like how they interact together and of course one of the other things i did like was seeing john stewart see his son in the future especially because his son was actually really sad because we find out that john stewart dies in the future so that little heart to heart that those two had was actually really nice and actually showed that it was like oh him and hawk girl actually do have a child together so it's like yeah we already knew that john stewart he was getting the hose but at least this episode shows us that yeah he was putting it 
down too even though we already knew that he was putting it down because if you watch justice league and justice league unlimited you know that man had the hose but yeah we just see him in that one that was just pretty cool just to see like an older terry along with like an older younger batman and the old batman that we saw too that was showed in the future though now the last time we ever see terry animated of course in the animated series universe is in the last episode of justice league unlimited season two and that is called epilogue and this one we basically find out that he's essentially bruce wayne's son because there's a lot of wild stuff that happens in this episode like very wild mainly because amanda waller she essentially got the got some dna of bruce and put it inside of terry's dad and essentially like changed all his reproduction stuff that like it would basically shoot out that is bruce wayne's dna it's some very wild stuff she mainly did that because she was scared of a, a world where like batman is not in it so she did that and throughout the episode we see like how terry has really been dealing with the having a family and then um also being batman because he actually wants to marry dina because dina at this point she's very fed up as an adult she's like yo i need some type of commitment and we see by the end of the episode he's going to like actually marry dina he's like proposed to her because like in the episode we see him and bruce and he's even telling bruce he's like dog we are not the same i'm not like you i'm stronger than you and i can actually go get a family i don't want to be lonely like the way you are and we actually get to see like how he has a heart to heart with him along with terry actually finding out that his dad is actually bruce from like amanda waller and amanda waller telling her telling him basically like oh you're not a clone of bruce you're your own person and then like she's also like calling him dumb or some other dumb shit too but yeah it was a pretty good episode i guess to finish off the whole series of batman beyond just for terry giving him a good fitting ending because we get to see he gets to be with the woman that he wants to be with along with him being his own person i do think it's pretty interesting that they just show that like, it was like yeah he's actually related to bruce like through some you know a whole bunch of genetic type of bs science stuff and all that even though you know they could have just said that like maybe bruce like smashed his mom or something at one point they could have done that instead of you know injecting his actual dad with bruce's dna which is some very wild stuff so i'm just like how you go to the doctor and just get ejected with all this wild night because it was like through like nanotech and all that too yeah it was just, it's kind of just like ridiculous when you think about it. it's like this is how he becomes bruce's actual biological son which is just kind of funny but at the same time i just like that it's a fitting ending for the character because like terry's actually doing something that fits his character because one he likes being with dina and like he would want to have a family not be alone like the way bruce is because bruce basically chose that from own self because he never wanted to have a family that people could hurt him because he had all these different villains like the joker and other people that could find his family and hurt him so he never wants to experience that ever again where terry terry really for the most part doesn't have no crazy villains that would really do like that because terry has no joker on his level that could really do that and we saw even in the movie when terry actually did meet the joker you saw that all the tactics that the joker would do on bruce didn't work on terry at all and terry was beating his ass because that doesn't work for him because like he's not gonna have like the same mind games that bruce had with like with the joker where terry he's not really about none of that shit he's like dog i'm just trying to whoop your ass that i can go back to the club and have the time of my life so that's kind of the difference between like how bruce and terry are they're vast different batmans because they kind of have totally different lives because one terry's a delinquent where bruce he had a really nice family and then you know he had that tragic ass backstory so that's kind of the difference and also in the episode we do see that amanda waller kind of wanted to make terry have like the same backstory as bruce but then eventually that doesn't happen at all because like she was trying to just set up like another batman but eventually you saw terry did become batman in just like a different way though but yeah batman beyond is a really fantastic series and i love everything about the series it was so goddamn good and and I really do like it more than batman the animated series i think it's because i relate so much to terry compared to like bruce wayne and i also i just like the whole scene of just like the club now when it comes to the club scenes in batman beyond i can't lie the club scenes are so goddamn good and like they're honestly some of the best club scenes in like any animated series even if you go with anime stuff anything in general anything that's been animated the only other thing i can think of that has a really cool club scene is something like orange road that has a really cool club scene but at the same time the way batman beyond made the club look that shit was always fire and especially like the movie too the movie made it even more crispier too but yes the club scene was like one of the things i loved a lot about batman beyond because it was just so dope they're just like dog they're all in high school they go to the club they're having the time of their life and it's like even terry because he was fighting crime and there's like that one episode that man went to the club and he was falling asleep because he was so goddamn tired even though he had dina there and like she was getting mad about that because there's a lot of rememberable scenes in this series especially the one when like terry first meets melanie and you just see like they're vibing like that because there's so many times they're just vibing you 
you're just like, yo, I can relate to me and somebody like that. I just vibe with as soon as I met them. Batman Beyond, one of the best Batman series ever made. It's so goddamn good, especially even you look at the end, the way the animation is. I mean, the animation, all the animated series stuff, even going to like Justice League Unlimited was always peak, but this one looks so goddamn good too. And it just sucks that we never got more of Terry, at least like animated wise. I know that there was supposed to be a quote unquote like movie that was going to be in the same direction of like Spider-Verse, but you know, they canceled it sadly, which is like, why did you do that to us? Because we need to see this man Terry on the big screen again, or just we need to see Terry in general. Yes, I know there are comics that continue his story and all that, but at the same time, I just wish that we would get another animated series that would show Terry because like Batman Beyond was so goddamn good and Terry's a really good Batman. He's a very relatable Batman. And I just wish that we could have got more for this series, cause especially because we could have got more villains that could have just been like, you know, just for Terry because majority of his villains were kind of meh. You had like the one guy, I forgot what his name is, but he would always give like some history lessons and all that. I think he was like a mad bomber or something like that. Like you had him who was kind of mad. And of course you have like the power family too, because you have like the one dad, eventually he becomes mutator or he becomes like the nuclear type of guy. And then you have the son that takes over for like the Wayne power stuff. So yeah, you had them, but they were really not that big of villains to me. They're just there. Like the most important villains, like I said, was Ink. Ink was like one of the most important villains to me because she actually was interesting compared to like all the other villains. Because I was mainly watching this series just for Terry. Bruce and some of the other side characters and just seeing what they're doing I really didn't care for like the villains at all because the villains for the most part are not really that interesting besides the villains that are from Batman the animated series they were actually good because a lot of them had really good send-offs just for, like in the series or just in their character so that was one of the things I really did like just seeing all these characters that are from Batman the animated series and especially even learning like what exactly like happened between Bruce and all the other Bat family the only person we really don't know is like Nightwing like that we just know he never really shows up. he's just not around anymore and of course with the movie we find out what happened with Robin and of course we find out what happened between Bruce and Barbara but eventually they kind of like amend things a little bit though but yeah if y'all have seen all the Batman Beyond let me know how you feel about if you grew up watching Batman Beyond let me know have you watched the series recently if not you need to go watch the series I can't lie you might have to check out somebody like your stores that sell like used DVDs Blu-rays video games any of that because I got mine for like only $9.99 and y'all should do that instead of buying like a brand new one that's on the internet because like most I think I think it's on the internet this is like a, a 30 to 50 dollar Blu-ray when it's like like go to a used store and see if you can find this series because trust me this is something that you should own because it's so goddamn good and if not i think hbo max has this so you can go on hbo max and watch this series because you should watch this series again because it's so goddamn good i know i keep saying it but i got to because batman beyond is so goddamn good though but yeah if you enjoyed the video why not like if you didn't you dislike subscribe really enjoyed but yes please go watch batman beyond if you've not watched it in years because trust me you'll really enjoy it and just know terry's a very relatable batman and that man was fighting crime and shaking ass in the club with all the hoes though.